Chapter 26 On Salutations and a Salutary Opinion Greet with the Salam all Muslims, whether you know them or not. If you greet someone and he does not return your greeting, do not think ill of him, but rather say to yourself, he may not have heard, or perhaps he answered and I did not hear. When you enter your house, greet your family with the salam, and when you enter a mosque or an empty house, say, As-salamu alayna wa ala ibadillah salihin Peace be upon us and on the virtuous servants of God. When you meet a Muslim, always try to greet him before he greets you. The Messenger of God, may blessings and peace be upon him, was once asked, When a Muslim meets a Muslim, who should give greetings first? And he replied, The one most devoted to God. And in another hadith, he said that a rider should greet a pedestrian, a man standing should greet a man seated, a younger man, a man who is older, and a smaller group, a larger. When someone sneezes and then praises God, say to him, Yarhamukallah, may God have mercy on you. If he does not praise God, then remind him by saying, Alhamdulillah, God be praised. Do not enter a house other than your own without asking permission. If you ask thrice and receive no answer, then ask no more and depart. When a Muslim calls you, then answer with labbaik, at your service. If he invites you to his table, accept, unless you have a legitimate excuse. If he adjures you to do something, allow him to fulfill his oath as long as it does not involve anything sinful. Do not beseech anyone by God, but if it be beseeched in this way, comply. Visit the sick, attend funerals, and visit your brothers in God wherever you long to do so. Shake their hands when you meet, inquire about how they are and how those whom they love are, so that if any of them is sick, you may visit him, and if any of them is working on something, you may help if you can or else pray for him. Think well of all Muslims, and beware of thinking ill of any of them. The Prophet, may blessings and peace be upon him, has said, Two traits are unsurpassed by any other good, thinking well of God and thinking well of his servants. And two traits are unsurpassed by any other evil, thinking ill of God and thinking ill of his servants. To think well of Muslims is to regard nothing they do or say as evil when it can be interpreted otherwise. If you cannot find a good interpretation, in the case of sins for example, then reproach them for committing them and believe that their faith will eventually drive them to refrain and repent of them. Thinking ill of Muslims is to regard as evil those acts and words of theirs which are in appearance good. For example, you may see a Muslim who frequently prays, gives charity, and recites the Qur'an, and you think that he is only doing this so that people may see him and that his aim is wealth and social position. This corrupt form of thinking only occurs to those who are inwardly vile, and this is an attribute of the hypocrites. As God the Exalted has said in describing them, those who point disparagingly at such of the believers who willingly give charity. Chapter 9, verse 79. That is, they accuse them of ostentation. And the Prophet has said, may blessings and peace be upon him, invoke God so abundantly that the hypocrites say that you are ostentatious. Make frequent supplications and ask for forgiveness for yourself, your parents, relatives, friends, and all other Muslims, for the prayer of a Muslim for his brother in his absence is answered. The Prophet, may blessings and peace be upon him, has said, Some prayers have no veils between them and God, the prayer of the wronged, and that of a Muslim for his brother in his absence. And, when a Muslim prays for his brother in his absence, the angel says, Ameen, and for you the same. Maymun ibn Mihran, May God have mercy on him, said, Anyone who asks forgiveness for his parents after each obligatory prayer has thanked them as he was ordered to do in his saying, Exalted is he, thank me and your two parents. Chapter 31, verse 14. It has been related that the one who asks forgiveness 27 times a day for the believing men and women will be among those whose prayers are answered and through whom people are given provision and rain and these are the attributes of the saints. Know that Muslims have many mutual obligations. 
if you want to fulfill these properly, then behave towards Muslims whether they be present or absent as you would like them to behave towards you. Oppose your own soul and accustom your heart to wish for Muslims every good that you wish for yourself and detest for them every evil that you detest for yourself. The Messenger of God, may blessings and peace be upon him, has said, None of you has believed until he loves for his brother that which he loves for himself. And Muslims are to one another as one building, each part of which supports the others, and as one body, which when one of its organs suffers, the rest of the body suffers with it. And Yahya ibn Mu'ad, may God have mercy on him, said, If you cannot be of benefit to the Muslims, then do not harm them. If you cannot please them, then do not abuse them. If you cannot make them happy, then do not make them sorrowful. And if you cannot praise them, then do not disparage them. My master, Muhyiddin Abdul Qadir al-Jilani, may God be pleased with him, has said, Be with the truth as if there were no creation. And be with creation as if you had no ego. And one of the predecessors said, People are either afflicted or free. So be compassionate to the afflicted and thank God for freedom. And praise belongs to God, Lord of the worlds.